Check, check. Hello? Okay, great. Are, are, are we streaming? Did, uh, Kurt, Curtis, did you just hit, hit, hit next scene so that the, the camera's on on stage? Okay, good. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for sticking around to watch Maxi, filmed in Eugene. We have with us the filmmaker, Jarrett Bryant, and I believe Henry is also in the house as well. If you could have both of them up on stage, please. I sanitized the, the mics earlier, so feel, feel free to, to grab a mic when, when you get over here. Yeah, you, you, can come, you can come down this way. It's fine. Hello to our audience that is watching us via live stream, and hello to everyone here in the theater. Thank you for joining us. I know this is a very long day with multiple films. We appreciate you hanging with us. Oh, hey. You, you can also just take, take it directly off, off the stand, too. That's fine. Yep. Okay. Do we want to have uh, just any introductions across the board here? Can I take my mask off? Yes, you can. All right. Uh, I'm Henry Huntington. I did the uh, all the cinematography and editing for the film. My name is Jared Bryant, and I'm the writer and director of Maxi. I'm uh, Reese Miller Reynolds, and I was a cast member of Maxi. Thank you, everyone, for making the trek down from Eugene, and thank you for making this film. It's obviously a very difficult film to make, addressing a very serious topic. Uh, what I appreciate about it, we've seen films that have tried to take on similar issues of drug abuse, and we've talked about it before. You know, there's films like Requiem for a Dream is a great example, Spun is a good example, but it's also very focused on the drug taking itself. And in this film, it's following to addicts, but at no point do you really have the process. You know, we're, we're not seeing pipes or needles or, or, or you know, the, the actual par paraphernalia. Was that a really intended focus that the film would not, would, would be more so on the emotional aspect and not on the gratuitous aspect of, of the actual drugs? Absolutely. Um, I thought it was important that we focused on the, the young kids, um, their struggles, their day to day, um, as opposed to, um, drug uses. We've all seen that before many, many times on film, so I didn't feel that was relevant. I felt it was much more important for us to understand who they are and what they go through. We have microphones here and here. So if anyone in the audience would like to ask a question for any of our panelists, thank, thank you for being here. You want to talk maybe about your character and kind of how, how you got involved with the film? Um, well, uh, Jared, the talked to me about it and he told me about it. I wasn't a huge role. I was a kid, the little kid with the skateboard uh, with Suzanne over there, his wife. And um, it wasn't a huge role, but for the time I was there, just having the whole experience and experiencing the whole thing was amazing. I mean, it's my first real like movie show show. I've done tons of acting jobs for like stage, but just like the process behind it and like multiple takes, trying to get the right angles, just like the whole process of it was a real cool experience for me. And the process also got complicated. Uh, Henry or, or Jared, maybe we should talk about trying to make a film during COVID and all of the, the added issues that come with that. Yeah, so this was basically just a project that I took on because I've typically done uh, my own short films that I storyboard out and do work with friends and family. And so Jared approached me to do this one and I thought it was a good opportunity to do cinematography for a feature-length film and editing for a feature-length film but yeah doing it like two weeks after we started shooting the, the lockdown kind of went into full effect and so we, Jared had to really go back and rewrite a lot of the script and and uh, we had to shoot in a bunch of environments where you're basically doing guerrilla style, style shooting and it's a real dialogue driven story so uh, kind of made my job simple, but still I, we were doing it just flying by the seat of our pants and it was kind of just trying to capture the action and and uh, okay. capture the story as best as possible, but lots of challenges in shooting in public environments for sure. I believe we have a question over here. Hi, um, I'm Norma and I'm Hello. former director of a drug and alcohol recovery center here in Oregon. And I really appreciate you making this film. Oh, thank you. Thank you for taking all the time that it took, and it was a great script, really oh, good writing, and the 
emotional impact was really strong because I've uh, worked with a lot of these type of kids and um, it's not glamorous what it all devolves into and I think you did a good job of having it be suspenseful and then I was afraid one of the main characters was going to die as it went along you know but you brought it to a point where yeah near death was involved in it and very emotionally sad uh, feeling to it so that's good right okay. that the film would have that impact and I wondered who your desired audience is like who you would like to get to watch it college students high school students how college, you plan to distribute school, it yeah college high school even um, many uh, mid what's that mid mid level or mid um, Middle, like middle school, yeah, middle, middle school, school, eighth graders, um, to watch it over maybe a two-day period. Um, most importantly, um, I want conversation, you know, open dialogue um, with kids and teachers and parents and so forth. And I, I and if even if one kid decides, you know, I don't want to go down that path, you know, the film did its job. Yeah, that's a great use for it and you know there's the restorative justice program going on in right. a lot of the high schools and that would be a great team to link up with because they have a lot of dialogues with the kids and restorative justice mm -hmm. restorative okay. justice it's called it's real it's real big in Eugene and Portland and uh, to have that be the movie be used as an educational device Correct. is a great idea thank you so much Correct. for making it thank you thank you Norma, uh, if you're with us tomorrow, we have a film that's also about a shelter that follows very, very closely called Again and Again that I hope that you can join us to watch because I think with your line of work, I think you'll, you'll find that these two films kind of fit very, very well together. So please come back yeah. tomorrow. Do we have another question over here? Before yeah. we do that, I, I want to acknowledge two other cast members. This is Christian Huntington. He played uh, the bad guy <laughs> on the basketball court and so forth. And up, we, up there we have... Uh, Alexis, hi. <laughs> Sorry, we didn't Hello. <laughs> Let's have a question over here and then we'll, we'll go over here. Okay. Hey, I wanted to talk about the performance of Maxi, an incredible performance. And yes. maybe talk a little bit about did you have him watch Gilbert Grape or anything like that? He looked like a young DiCaprio in uh, my mind. <laughs> no, I actually had him watch um, Leaving Las Vegas with uh, Nicholas uh, Cage. I thought that that was a good film for him to watch and have his moments and he did he watched it several times and this that's the character he created and he was excellent and he's at you know, vermont by the way now he's in college nice. he was 19 at the time and so was uh live they were both 19 years old and this was their first feature film and they did an excellent job so to, um, in terms of the um you know you did a beautiful job also with costume and and their faces looked amazing their teeth obviously <laughs> um, can you talk a little bit about that and preparing that for that role? And his ticks were really remarkable. Yeah, the ticks it was hard. Were... It was actually. I'm sorry to interrupt. It was hard to watch him because it was so realistic in a lot of ways. Well, the ticks were his own. He created those um, actually during the audition, and I thought that when once I saw the ticks, I was like, okay, you got the part. Yeah. Um, the makeup was myself and Liv, uh, the Sid who plays Sid. Um, found some food coloring for the teeth and the skin, pop marks for the skin and red blood was used for that. And, uh, and, and baby oil for the hair to give it that greasy look, you know, which they hated. <laughs> <laughs> but it worked. <laughs> and it should be, be noted again, we, we're doing shorter in-person Q and A's, but we have a very lengthy Q and A that we did with several cast members as well as Henry and Jarrett that's on the online side. So for those of you watching via live stream and for those of you in the audience who have an online pass, if you bought a festival pass, you also get an online pass. We have a probably half hour long Q&A where we really go into great detail with the film. We have a question over here as well. Hi. Hello. Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask a question about after seeing the film and or while shooting it, did the process of making it make you see Eugene in a different way? Because I feel like when I was watching it, I saw a bunch of, of places that I've been to before, but never seen them in a context like this. Yes. Um, Eugene, as well as every city, including probably Klamath as well, 
um, there's an underbelly. And there's always that dark side where you have the people that dwell there, usually um, teenage youths um, on drugs or addicted to drugs and homeless people and so forth and so on. Um, in that world and a lot of times when you watch a movie you only see the beautiful house on the hill you only see the nice neighborhood the nice businesses and the kids the nice kids on bikes riding by or skateboarding by but you don't see or you block it out you block out the dark side so yes Eugene is a beautiful place but there is an underbelly with uh, we have an autographed poster here that Jared has signed, but with Henry and some of the cast members here as well, I think maybe we should have them sign it too before we, we give that away. But Jared, uh, I want to leave it up to you to whoever in our audience um, wants to have an autographed poster from this film with some of the cast members as well as Henry. So we'll we'll take care of that afterwards. Do we have one more question? Or is uh, it looks like we have one time for one more question. I'm sorry that we have to shut the um, cut the Q and A short, but we're yeah. running. To, I want That's to make sure we stay on schedule. So. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, um, the movie is very grounded in reality, but then you brought in an almost supernatural element with the faces, which I sort of interpreted as kind of death or whatever. And I was wondering if you wanted, if, I'd be curious about your thought process about what, where that came from and um, why you felt that, that was important to include in the movie. Right. Well, the grinders, we call them, were, were, that was the addiction, the pull, the draw. And as those came about throughout the film, there was that need and urgency to use. And, and that's what they were used for as a, as a device. Um, I, I kind of like that rather than having, you know, them constantly chat about wanting to use. I wanted to see through visuals, through, through a visual medium. Um, and I think it added a, an extra layer um, to the film and it made it a little more haunting. Thanks. Uh, uh, Jared, I know you've had an opportunity to take this film to a couple of festivals, but I'm not sure if, if Henry and our cast members have. So uh, was, was this your first time seeing it on, on the big screen? And, and what, are, what are your thoughts on finally getting to see uh, the project that you were a part of? Uh, let's kind of go, go, down, go down the line. So Second time on the big screen, actually. Uh, Jared, just a few days ago, hosted a cast and crew at a little theater in downtown Eugene. So we watch it together there, but those are, this is the second time I've seen it on the big screen, so. And yourself? Same here is uh, my second time seeing it on the big screen, but just like, for me especially this time now, it's not just like the cast, it's like actually other people, it really gives it that like, wow, we did it kind of experience. <laughs> <laughs> so somehow you, you overcame not just the realities of the, of the filmmaking process, which was so difficult, but then all of the COVID stuff that yes. hit when you were halfway through the production which totally veered the project in a whole other, other directions. Congratulations, uh, all, all of you who worked on, on the project and, and played a part in it. Um, terrific film, and hopefully you stick around tomorrow to see some more of our films, and um, we'll, we'll see how things end up with all of our awards. So, Excellent. Um, for the time being, let's get some autographs on this poster. We'll figure out who in the audience is going to walk away with an autograph poster from that film. That poster is up to the three, or I guess the four of you, to determine who gets to go home with it. Okay. <laughs> so I uh, uh, figure something out there. Thank you so much for participating. In it. Thank, Thank you. We really appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Our next film is a documentary by Devin Tao called Who's on Top? LGBTQ Summit Mount Hood. It's a documentary about a group of LGBTQ members um, hoping, as the, the title suggests, hoping to hike to the top of Mount, Mount Hood. Um, and all of the emotional tie-ins uh, that come with that. So we hope that, that you enjoy it. Please stick around. We will have a Q&A afterwards with Devin and Stacy, one of the, the individuals in the film. Um, and uh, yeah, th thank you so, so much for, for taking part. We appreciate it. I know it's been a long day. Uh, we will have two more films after Who's on Top, and then at 8 o'clock, hopefully you can join us over at Klamath Basin Brewing for a little after party. So thank you for being a part of Climate Independent Film Festival. We appreciate it. And without any further ado, here's Who's on Top. <laughs>